Yeah, thank you. And the reason that I'm holding a microphone is simply because we have this live streaming right now. So again, sound system not working, but both Molly and I will talk as loud as we can, as long as we, as long as we can hold up our, our uh, volume out of our voices here. My name's Nick Egger. I'm the Public Works Director for the City of Hastings. Uh, the City and MnDOT have been working on this project for probably the, the better part of the last two years. Just a quick show of hands, how many folks here in the room came to any, either of the previous two open houses? Wanted to get a sense of that. All right, so probably a little over 50%. How many have looked at the website or engaged with any number of the, the various staff that have been involved in this? It's a pretty good chunk too. Good, we're, we're glad to hear that. We know that it's been very active in the exchanges that have happened. Uh, and that's important as it's all fed into what we end up with here for the final concept and layout of the project. Um, one thing you're going to see recurring here is we did a lot of, of Q&A as to what ranked is most important to folks in their concerns along the corridor. And there's charts and graphs of that in the back, and you'll see it again in the presentation. But that's what fed into all of the design features that you'll end up seeing both in the layouts that are at the tables over there as well as the images on the screen. So I'm going to ha have Molly take over for me here, and she'll run through that uh, as to how we got here, what the features are. We'll leave a little time for some Q&A on a general big picture uh, level at the end. And then if you have specific questions as it relates to perhaps your driveway or your property, detailed stuff like that, we'd kindly ask you to work with any of the staff that we have over at the tables with the layouts. That's going to be your best bet to dig uh, down into those details a little bit further. So uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to Molly Klein. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Again, my name is Molly Klein. I'm with MnDOT. And we have been out here, like Nick had mentioned, a couple of times already. <laughs> Thank you. OK. We will be talking about the project overview, evaluation, the evaluation that we've done. Um, talk about the concept that you probably have seen a little bit of a sneak peek of here today, the budget and the next steps. Um, the project area, there is an update of the project area. So when we were here at the last open house, the entirety of Highway 316 was shown as um, a construction project. Unfortunately, due to budget constraints, um, the area in green, so the area in the city of Hastings, is remaining in 2021, which is the same time we had talked about at the last open house. Unfortunately, again, due to those budget constraints, south of the city limits of Hastings is being pushed off into 2024. So we're unable to do the full project in 2021, but this section in Hastings remains in 2021 as we had initially, initially planned. The evaluation area in the city limits of Hastings included a number of items, which you can see here. The pavement, we, MnDOT, knew the pavement needed to be replaced, um, and that was the big driver for our engagement efforts off the bat. We knew we needed to come and do the pavement. We were here to ask what else we needed to do. What weren't we aware of? What could we tie in with a project knowing we had some construction planned in 2021? We, on our field walk, um, we're very well aware that everyone uses the same roadway. There is no pedestrian facilities. There is no trail. There is very limited shoulder in certain areas. So if you're biking or walking or driving an 18-wheeler, you are all on that same pavement. Um, it didn't feel comfortable for us walking it for, that op or for the um, field walk. I can only imagine that it is uncomfortable for you guys to use as well on a daily basis. We had heard speed is a concern. We verified that with the speed that with the currently hard to make are going to become more and more challenging to make as development occurs. Um, and then again back to the trail and sidewalk connections and the lack of trail and sidewalk. 
This is a graphic you would have seen at the second open house. This is what we heard at that first open house. What were the concerns? That was the big push of that first open house was to understand what we didn't know and what the big concerns were. The first um, item or the item we heard the most about was access. Again, those left turns are a challenge, especially during the peak hours, whether you're turning left into your driveway or a side street or left out of your driveway or a side street. Safety was the second one. It's the crashes. There are a number of crashes on the corridor and, and you guys told us about that as well. Um, bike and ped access, again, there's no trails. I don't um, have any good answer of why there aren't other than we're looking at it to put them in now. Speed is the fourth topic, the fourth main topic that we heard. Speed was a concern. Again, we have um, information to corrobor corroborate that. The fifth item that we heard was the intersection at 61 and 316 in Hastings. Again, that is not planned to be incorporated into this project in 2021. There is a project planned in 2026 on Highway 61, which will look at that intersection. So unfortunately, it's outside the scope of this project, but we will be looking at it with a future project on 61. Um, one more thing about this graphic. This graphic was at every meeting that our project team had. The real goal of our project team meetings was to make sure everything we were looking at hit on one or more of those top four items. So access, safety, bike and ped, and speed. Those were the four items we were looking to help with. Um, how we evaluated. Again, those four topics are here today. Um, access. Property and street access, intersections, we heard mentions of traffic signals and roundabouts, um, as well as turn movements. Spiral Boulevard has probably the worst operations out of any intersection on 316 within the city of Hastings. That's because south of Tuttle, there's half the traffic on 316 that there is on this north end. So we really focus in on Spiral Boulevard and making sure that intersection worked, understanding that whatever we could do here to make things better would make it better south of here as well. So these lines, I know they're hard to see. Um, the average delay of the intersection is in a decent range from a MnDOT perspective, understanding that there's no delay on 316, it's all on spiral. So those are the blue, oops, the blue lines here, which, which are the left turn traffic, the left turners on spiral. That's where the delay really is and that's where it's challenging to get in and out of spiral. We looked at the current configuration, side street stops. So spiral is the only intersection or the only leg that has any um, impediments. We looked at a signal and we looked at a roundabout. Unfortunately, the signal does not currently meet warrants to put in, nor are we projecting that it will meet those warrants in 2040. So even with all of the development and the growth that we're anticipating in this area, we still wouldn't be able to put a signal in in 2040. So that didn't carry any further than this um, initial review. The roundabout, however, does have promise. So it introduces some delay on 316, which which is okay, we want to slow people down and that would incorporate some of that delay in slowing traffic down. It also helps with that delay on, on spiral. So it helps in the current afternoon peak as well as in that future. So the 2040 uh, p.m. peak you can see here, it has similar delay as to what it has now, but that is much better than if we did nothing. If we do nothing, the, sides, the average delay throughout the day would be almost one minute for spiral traffic. And that is, it becomes an even bigger issue. Again, like we had talked about, it's an even bigger issue the farther into the future we get. Compact roundabouts provide a number of benefits. Um, the smaller radius fits within the right of way, so we impact those adjacent property owners less. We provide adequate gaps. So again, that access point that we had heard a lot about, it's challenging to get out. These compact roundabouts provide that gap for you to get out onto Highway 316. It effectively moves traffic, but at a slower speed. Again, speed we heard was a big concern and this will reduce the speeds on Highway 316. Uh, it doesn't have any lost wait times. I don't know about you guys, but I get really irritated when I sit at a signal and nobody's around and I'm still sitting at the signal. The roundabout eliminates that. If, if nobody's there, you can continue moving and you don't have to stop and wait for the green time on your signal leg. Oh. There we go. Sorry about that. 
Um, we also again heard safety and bike and ped access. So I've tied these together because what we do to improve safety for the traffic also improves safety for the pedestrians. So we heard accidents and crashes are a problem. We have heard there's a lot of close calls. While we can't measure that from a traffic engineering perspective, we can relay that back to actual documented crashes. Um, pedestrian crossings were a concern and traffic movements that feel unsafe. Um, Typically, movements that feel unsafe are not the right turns. Right turns typically don't feel unsafe. It's the left turns that feel unsafe. So the crash data. This is a, um, this is a graphic right out of our last open house, I believe. Um, it shows that while the average um, crash rate that we would expect at an intersection or a roadway similar to 316 is 0.76, this area ranges from anywhere from 0.128 to point, or 2.14. So that's much higher than what we would expect to see crash-wise here. And also reiterates that the crashes and the safety is a concern. Of the crashes in this area, 32% of them are rear-end crashes. 29% are right-angle crashes. And, and very luckily and thankfully, there are zero bike and ped crashes. So to improve safety, we're proposing to add a center median, a compact roundabout at Tiffany, as well as a trail on both sides of Highway 316. The median, again, I'm, I'm sure it's not popular to have to take a right to then make a U-turn and take a left, but that median provides a number of benefits, one being speed reduction. It introduces an urban section with curb and gutter. It signals to the driver that you're now in town. You're supposed to be driving slower. You're narrowing up the lanes and providing that recognition that you're no longer south of Hastings on a rural two-lane road. You're now in town. And in town, we're going to drive slower than we were driving south of town. Um, it introduces a pedestrian refuge, so that crossing distance for a pedestrian or a bicyclist, you only have to cross one lane of traffic at a time. If it were a, a um, three-lane section or something different, you'd have to cross a much larger, longer distance, which would feel more uncomfortable with the growing traffic. So this way you can focus on one lane of traffic, cross, you have an area to wait. A seven-foot uh, median typically is the pedestrian refuge space. I pull a bike trailer with my kids. I like a little bit of extra room so that you can fit your bike and your kid and your um, trailer all in that median area and you're out of the way. Um, it also then provides um, that external um, curb and gutter area as well so you're, you're more confined, the driver's more confined to help again reduce that speed of travel into and out of Hastings. There's a boulevard which sets that trail back a little ways from the road um, and provides a trail on both sides. The compact roundabouts, again, they shorten that pedestrian crossing distance. If we were at a typical multi-lane intersection, you'd have a through lane, a right turn lane, possibly a left turn lane, and a lane coming south. So instead of crossing four lanes of traffic at one time, you're crossing one. It reduces the crash severities. So if you'll remember back a couple slides, there was some rear end crashes and some right angle crashes. These compact roundabouts have a 68% reduction in right angle crashes and a 32% reduction in rear end crashes. Those are the big two that are out here today, which we can drastically reduce with these improvements. And speed. So we documented that speed is a concern. In the 35 mile an hour speed area, we're showing speeds anywhere from 42 to 46 miles an hour. In a 35 mile an hour zone, that's, that's much too fast. And just putting a different sign up there saying the speed limit is 30 isn't gonna impact the driver. We have to engineer our way out of that. We have to design our way out of that to influence the driver to drive slower. I don't, I don't know how many times I've come into a town and, and it's 45 and I didn't notice because the road looks exactly the same as it did when it was 60. So, we have to design our way into a slower speed, and that's what we're proposing to do with these concepts. So when we were here at our last open house, we asked for your input on a number of concepts. I think we had eight or 10 concepts. Um, on the north end by Spiral, it was a mini roundabout or a compact roundabout at Spiral, or at 31st, or we could do nothing. The overwhelming support was the mini or compact roundabout at Spiral. The same was true for at Tuttle. The options at Tuttle were a compact roundabout at Tuttle or nothing. And overwhelming support was for the compact roundabout. The middle section from 33rd to Malcolm was a little bit different. So we gave five options, the baseline being one, 
obviously the least preferred, um, but concepts B and D tied and the ranking, both in person and uh, when you combine the online information that we received, those were tied. Concept B, if you'll remember, was the center left turn lane plus one lane in each direction, so you'd have three lanes of traffic coming through town. That will do the least for speed reduction. We would essentially make the road wider than it is today. We would not have that urban section like we're proposing, and we don't necessarily feel that's a benefit to pedestrians. So instead of crossing a single lane of traffic, you're now having to cross three lanes of traffic at once. Concept D, as you can see here, it ranked out much better overall project-wise. Um, it does much more for speed reduction by introducing that median, those compact roundabouts, the trails on both sides. Um, it, it provides a lot of benefit. So where it ranks the worst, though, is public funding. So we it's the most expensive option, which is why it ranked the least. Um, that is how we, we, as a project team, came back and talked about those two options and the benefits of those. And as you can see, the star shows Concept D does the most for those top four items we heard. Access, bike and ped safety, um, speed, and I'm missing one. Access. <laughs> the top one. Perfect. Um, so that, when you stitch all of those together, so the compact roundabout at Spiral, the Concept D, which includes the um, compact roundabout at Tiffany, the median, the trails on both sides, and then a compact roundabout at Tuttle, you get this concept layout. This is the same graphic that is printed over here. I know you can't see this. Um, I can't see it, and I'm standing in the front. But it does give you an idea of how they stitch themselves together. So north is to the left. This is spiral with a compact roundabout. Um, the second compact roundabout in the middle at Tiffany, and the third at Tuttle. These piece themselves together to kind of bookend 316. So if you're coming south, you hit a compact roundabout as soon as you get on 316 to keep your speed slow. You're not gonna speed up coming, coming south because you're gonna hit a second compact roundabout at Tiffany. And then the third one at Tuttle. And then you're free to go 60 when you're getting out of town, but you can't start speeding up until you're south of that compact roundabout at Tuttle. Because again, we have that median, we have those trails, we have that urban section which confines you in and tells you you're in town and you should be driving slower. People are living here, they're working here, they're walking and biking along here. You should be going slower because you're in town. Without these concepts, there's not a lot to do. That concept B with the center turn lane, Again, we're paving a wider area than we have today. If we're concerned about speed, paving wider isn't going to help us at all. It will probably work against us as we move forward. So the project budget. This is, again, a different slide than we talked about last time. Last time we were here, our budget was much larger because we were going to mill and overlay all the way to the south junction of 316 and 61. We've removed that um, cost from this budget slide. So MnDOT again has two and a half million dollars we're bringing to, to this project. Unfortunately, it doesn't fund the whole thing. So we have 3.1 million dollars of, of funding that we need. 600 or so thousand the city of Hastings will bring to the table, which brings us, or leaves us with a 2.4 million dollar funding gap. Now that funding gap sounds very large, and we have been working tire tirelessly with the city and the elected officials to talk about that funding gap and figure out how we can gather those funds. I know budgets are tight everywhere in the government, but we've been working with a number of elected officials. We have, um, there are bills introduced to get funding. We are continuously working to try to find that funding to fill the gap and, and make this project whole and be able to construct it in 2021. So the next step, so here's where we've been. We were out here in the winter of 2018 with our first open house. We were again here in the summer and now we're back in the spring of 19. Um, this doesn't end our public involvement, it just wraps up and shows you what we've all been working on. So from here we would look to continue working on preliminary design. We have a layout concept, that doesn't mean we're ready for construction, we still have a lot of work to do. And everything you will see today is draft. So 
we have some construction limits. If you are worried about something in your front yard, we have some draft information we are happy to share with you. But just remember that it's draft. We don't have everything nailed down yet. This is a concept that we will continue to tweak as we move forward. Not necessarily wholesale changes, but we can tweak it. If there's a driveway shown as closed on this layout, it does, we can talk about that and we would want to talk about that with you. Okay. Are there any general questions about the presentation? If you have specific questions about your property or your driveway or any of that stuff, we're happy to answer them over here. We have just a couple minutes for questions. Yeah? So what happens if you don't find the plumbing? That's a great question. We would have to def Oh, the question was what happens if you don't find the funding? There are likely two options. We could defer the project until the funding becomes available or we could downscope the project and do what we can with the money we have. Likely, we would defer the project. Yeah? No, there is no change between if you call it a mini roundabout or a compact roundabout, they are very, they are exactly the same, they're just interchangeable names. Yeah? What kind of funds are being used on this project? So the state, the two and a half million that we are bringing to the table is state funds. Um, the 600,000 that the city would use would likely be the state aid account out of um, Metro District state aid. The city gets funds every year that, that they could use for that. The 2.4 million is, is still up in the air. There's a number of opportunities perhaps, um, but we don't know what they might be. They haven't shaken out yet. Yep, we have run the compact roundabouts or the mini roundabout idea past them. They are very supportive. They have checked our models, our traffic models, um, and they are, they are confident that this will work in this area. So Possibly, yes. Go over here. So would you say that the three mini roundabouts are pretty well set? Yes, for this concept, yep. We don't always have all of the land. A lot of it we do. We're still trying to tweak those limits of what we might need. 90, I would, again, this is preliminary. I would say about 90% of the land we need to do this, we have. It's just little areas where we would have to grade out um, some of the slopes, but most of it we do have. Okay, one more. Uh, they have not. The question was, has Dakota Electric been contacted to see if they want to bury any of the utilities? And we have not reached out to them yet, no. Okay, with that, we will open it up for um, anyone to stop over and ask specific questions. Um, if the project starts in 2021, we would anticipate it, be, it would be done from spring to fall of 21. So one construction season. Again, we don't know exactly how it will be constructed quite yet, but that's our, our initial guess. Thank Thanks.